How to use every charger in the entire game. Oh my god, what was I thinking? Most weapons in Splatoon 2, you pick it up, you press the trigger, boom, you're already tearing it up. That's it, you're a master, go retire in Florida, watch out for the gators. But with the chargers, there's only one way to get good at this game with them. Make like a lawyer, and practice! How do you practice? First, go through all the single player levels, and don't just cheese your way through it with curling bombs, actually play it, especially the Octoling levels, with the motion controls on. These levels will help you get a feel for the supple nuance of the charger. Second, go into the training area and practice quick aiming with whatever charger you feel like, man. You'll know you're ready when you can be like me and hit 360s. I said when you can be like me and hit 360s. Hit 360s. Hit 360s. Then you'll be unstoppable. Third, hop into Turf War. If you're really high level, make an alt account if you have to. Sure, you might be ruining the day of eight year olds who got the game for Christmas. Well, guess what? You're the Grinch! You're a mean one, Mr. Smurf. You really are not perf. If you do all that, then you'll be ready for ranked battle. Or not. Maybe this won't work, in which case, how to use chargers if you're a huge fraud. Step one, focus on objective. Carry the Rainmaker while the rest of your team carries you. Step two, you're not missing your shots. You're applying pressure on the other team. Step three, you gotta look out for bombs if you're a charger, but on a lot of them, you got bombs of your own, so spam them. And while you can't run from your problems in real life, the IRS will find you eventually, you can run from them in the squid game. If you're in a bad spot, slap on some quick super jump, and you're safe. For now. General charger tips. Charge behind the wall, then step to the right and shoot. Don't let people see you laser, you can surprise them. That's it. There are, oh my god, that's a lot of chargers. But you can sort them into five categories. Small, medium, and large, and then two weird ones. Luckily for you, I'm, 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 I'm pretty much an expert on the chargers. I've been playing them for three days. So we'll be giving you my top tier tips that I stole from Twitter. You're gonna get like two or three tips for each charger, and then get the f*** out of my house! Splat chargers. The standard charger and the most popular one for a reason. That's because they're the most balanced one. Two subs of Ink Saver Main will give you an extra shot. To stand on snipe, charge up, then shoot. Don't miss. The vanilla splat chargers and hero charger have the best kit of the three. Splat bombs are the best bomb, and Stingray turns your long range weapon into the longest range weapon. The Firefin has wall to hide behind, but if you're playing charger, you probably won't have to use it very much if you're staying in the back where you belong, like the androids in Detroit become human weight. What the fuck? And suction bomb launcher can help you paint. This charger can maybe work in splat zones, but it's probably the worst one of these three. Cancel chargers for impatient players. If you're watching the rest of your team absolutely blow it at close range, you can baller in and handle things yourself. Sprinkler will help you charge it faster, but it's a frontline special on a backline weapon. It doesn't really mesh super well. After baller explodes, you're just kind of there. The E-Leader 4K, also spelled E-Litre if you're in the EU. E-Leader. E-Litre. It's like the Splat Charger, except it has a little bit extra range, with the trade-off being a longer charge time, and less mobility, and more ink consumption, and worse sub and special options, and uglier. Alright, this is a significantly harder charger to use than the Splat Chargers. Chargers are already a very high-risk, high-reward weapons, and the E-Leader is the highest risk for a slightly higher reward, I guess? While there are some maps where it makes more sense to use the E-Leader over the Splat Chargers, you should really only use the E-Leader if you're already a perfect elite sniper who doesn't miss. 
Hence the name. The basic 4K is one that nobody really uses. You can place mines in key spots and use rain to help you paint, I don't know, whatever. The custom E-Leader has beacons. As a backliner, you can already serve as a beacon for your team as long as you're staying alive. So why not give them three more beacons? And with the bubble blower, you can use it on offense and defense to clear out the enemy team from an area. Just the sight of the big bubbles will make the other team get the hell up out of there! The greatest debate of 2020 since which Pokemon game sucks the hardest, do you go scope or do you go unscoped? Both have their uses, but I'm pretty sure unscoped has more users. Unscoped can store your charge so you can move around then shoot. With the scope, you have slightly longer range and more accuracy when you're looking around. But while you're looking around, you're left more vulnerable than our emotions are at the end of Undertale. If you're going to use one with a scope, have a general knowledge of where you're aiming before you go into the scoped mode so that you're not a shitting duck a sitting duck. Squiffer is the shortest range charger, so you gotta be more aggressive, which also means you have to hit more of your shots. You have slightly longer range than the 96, which means you still outrange more than half the weapons in the game. Lots of Squiffers like to hop around and shoot, hop along the Squiff I guess, and that's because unlike all the other chargers, it charges at the same speed in midair as it does while you're on the ground. Do not underestimate the Squiffer, it can be deadly in the right hands. There's only one thing worse than a Squiffer. Two Squiffers. The classic Squiffer is great if you want to inflate your KD ratio on the results screen because you'll get a metric butt ton of assists. It's great for frauds like me. Point Sensor will tell your team where the other team is and can be useful for hitting your flick shots. Ink Armor will protect your whole team for a little bit. It might protect you from a shorter range foe rushing you while you're charging up. The new Squiffer is probably the best one of the three Squiffs. Auto Bombs are useful for many situations and Baller actually makes sense on a shorter range charger. For DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Squiff, suction bombs can also be useful for zoning and controlling your space. If you're good at snipping, and you're good at simping, then you're probably also good at inkjet. The Bamboozler! It has the fastest charge time, but it's the only charger that doesn't get a one-hit KO with a full charge. I fear no man, but that thing... It scares me. The most common tactic to cause a panda panic with this stick is to slap on three mains and five subs of main power up which will increase your full charge damage up to 99.9 .9 damage. This will cause anyone who's taken 0.1 damage to get one shot by this thing. If you stepped in enemy ink last Wednesday you will have taken 0.1 damage. But what if I told you you don't necessarily need to rely on your 99.9 .9 damage shots. Even with zero MPU equipped, a full charge and a tap shot? That's a kill! Double half charge shots? That's a kill! That being said, you should still use the MPU though. Bamboo 1, use curling bomb to get in close and use 10 missiles to make your target take some chip damage then finish him off with your MPU bamboo. Bamboo 2, use toxic mist to slow down your target and make it easier to hit them. Allegedly. And use burst bomb launcher to go into ultra instinct bamboo. Just burst and snipe, easy kills. Bamboo 3, use single charge explode a can to close the gap and use triple charge Pepsi milk to instantly explode your big bubbles.
The Gootuber. It used to be a meme, but now it's not. You have about the same range as the bamboo, but slower charge time than the splat charger. However, there are three gimmicks with this toilet snake. First, you can hold your charge for way longer time than any other charger. With other chargers, it's one second. With the Gootuber, it's five seconds. Gootubers just last longer. Second, unlike other chargers that need to charge all the way up first, you can store a partial charge and then continue charging later. Third, you can get a kick with the partial charge. At about two-thirds charge, you do over 100 damage, and using more MPU, you can get to 100 damage at even less of a full charge. So with a GooTuber, charge up, then swim around, and aim before you pop out to shoot. The original GooTuber is a weapon. It's technically a weapon. Suction bombs are okay. Splashdown can maybe help you out if you get flanked or something, but uh, don't count on it. Custom GooTuber is the better one. You can throw a curling bomb, charge up your goo, swim through the path you just left, but then strike! That's all I got, folks. Now here's some tips from the Barry, an actual real-life SEAL Team 6 sniper, I assume. Oh, so you want to be a charger main, huh? Well, good for you. And here's some helpful tips to get you started. Step one, pick your charger. You've got a great assortment to choose from, whether it's the more traditional chargers like splatter scopes and e-liters, or the faster paced chargers like Squiffer and Bamboo. And don't forget about that goo tuber. It'll surprise you with what it can do. Step two, find your sensitivity. Now I would suggest starting with zero zero, but if that's too slow and your shots are dragging behind your enemies, bump it up to two two. Too fast? Well then take it down a notch, give minus two minus two a try. The important thing is that you find the sense that works for you. Step three, choose your gear. Now this step is easy. Are you using a splat charger? Yes? Oh, well then grab yourself special charge up. Get your ray, your bomb rush, or your baller faster. Not using splat charger? Then what you want is main power up. Better range, better paint, better damage. All the other chargers get a real big buff from MPU. Step four, positioning. This step is a little tricky. You wanna to get to a power spot. What's that you ask? A power spot is a position on the map where you can pin the enemy back the most. Sometimes this will be on your snipe. Other times it'll be on a stack in mid. But once you're there, as long as you're feeling crispy and you're alert to where the enemy squids are, you can make that spot your bread and butter. You'll be doing damage for days from power spots. The fifth and final step, and this is the most important one. Flick your shots. Sounds like a joke, right? Wrong. Cause you've got to learn how to aim. Whether it's a stationary squid standing right in front of you or a psycho sploosh trying to omiwa move behind you, you've got to hit that shot. And nothing will teach you how to aim better than missing shots. So if you're going to miss, why not miss spectacularly? And before you know it, those flicks are going to start landing. At that point, you're going to be a pretty scary sniper. So go on, grab your laser pointer of choice, get out there, have fun, and hit some sick shots. Thanks for watching. If you actually play Chargers, please, please, please leave some actual advice in the comments below. And remember to point your scope over at that subscribe button and snipe the heck out of it. I have a whole playlist of Splatoon 2 weapon guides and tips and tricks. I think I've covered at least half the weapons. Plus, I make all sorts of videos on many other games, which you can check out in this playlist right over here. And make sure to go follow the Barry on Twitch. He's actually really good at Chargers. It makes me never want to play x rank so I don't run into him and get a knife. And uh, that's it. Video's over. See you next time.